The Promaster van, low roof, standard length, has served me well. I'm right at the two and a half year mark as my work truck. This was purchased as my pandemic mobile where I wanted to upgrade to something larger that I could put a sleeper bunk in and a refrigerator so I could drive to the work. At that point in time, I was based in Southern California and what little production work I was finding was out of state to states that were a little more opened up than California. So basically people were willing to hire me to shoot if I was willing to get myself there. And this rig also served as my transition vehicle to relocate from SoCal to Texas. So I installed this upper shelf, which is a queen size bed footprint. And for the last two and a half years, I've left that in, but I'm pulling it out for the shoot coming up because I'm working locally here in San Antonio. We're in a high rise downtown and I've got a ton of gear to load in through a loading dock. I think there's only two bays at this facility and there's going to be a queue in the morning with all the other normal deliveries. So I, I need to be able to back up and roll my cart down the ramp and in quickly and then get my van out of the way. And the other thing I found with these underground loading docks is you got a lot of trash, like sludge on the ground, stinky liquid and goo. And I don't want to be stacking my Pelican cases on the ground as I build carts to load them up and then have a bunch of foul cases. All right, let's talk heavy duty film production carts. These are Jaeger and or backstage heavy duty carts you see all over Hollywood. This was on a big commercial I worked on many years ago. They're made to ride in the truck with all your heavy cases on them. Nowadays, what's up, Josh? This is probably the most popular cart with the young DPs and just about all the camera assistants, innovative, crazy expensive. I'd rather have that money in the stock market. So instead, I run these rock and roller carts. Now this red one, I ran for close to 20 years and I ended up throwing it away when I moved to Texas. And I now regret it, I should have hung on to it. There was nothing wrong with it. I was just out of space during the move and didn't think I was gonna need it with my downsizing. Now I had a total of seven or eight carts. Here's my lighting head cart. This thing was probably 800 to 1,000 pounds, fully loaded Kino flows, tungsten fixtures, plus stands, bags, stingers. And this is what happens when you move the truck across the parking lot without putting a strap on the cart. This pancaked a mole tweeny fixture, which I think was like a $650 light. And then there's the mechanics tool chest. These are very popular on the lots in Hollywood, Warner Brothers, Sony Pictures, Paramount. You see them all in the background behind flat walls. I actually got the idea for my cart after working on a bunch of auto racing, seeing the pit crews load out of their semi trailers into pit row with their tricked out custom carts. And the most popular of all is the Nalpak Magliner. These are used in all kinds of industry, material handling, beverage delivery, and then the film industry has modified them to be platform mode with one, two, three shelves, film tools and backstage make all kinds of accessories. Now I purchased my Mag Liner Senior, I think in 2000. So it's been with me for 22 years. I bought it, I think it was $1,200. And then I upgraded the wheels to the foam filled, which was like another 300 bucks. So I got about $1,500 into this cart. Now that was 22 years ago. And other than a little bit of polish and minor repairs. It's been a no maintenance cart, abused. I've left it outside overnight many times. It's been rained on, bounced around in the back of trucks with a bunch of other equipment, disrespected by just about every client, director, and actor I've interacted with. They leave their coffee cups and beverages on it next to my lenses. This is what happens when you overload and center strap down to the deck of the truck versus the sidewalls. Quick field repair, pulled the shelf, leaned it up on the curb out in the street and stomped on it to straighten it out. And it's been fine. I think that was seven or eight years ago. My Magliner cart has outlived five work trucks. I started with a 1998 Ford Econoline cargo van, just like this one. Now this predated the era where there were cameras and cell phones. So I don't have any pictures of my truck. My next rig was a Ford F350 diesel with an eight foot bed. This was because I started another side business doing power distribution. I had two diesel generators I was doing deliveries on. So I put a tonneau cover on the back and I could transport the Magliner broken down with my gear next to it. I got a little wiser after that and picked up the Transit Connect and put in an eight foot permanently installed ramp. It's actually a wheelchair ramp. And that was awesome. And I optimized that truck for working in urban environments 
where I wanted to avoid loading docks. So low clearance, parking structures, visitor parking, compact spaces. Still my the ultimate rig. I kind of regret selling it. I, I should have kept that in addition to the, the bigger van. When I had the Transit Connect, I moved all the Grip Electric to a cube truck with a lift gate. The goal was to have someone in Grip Electric drive all of that gear and I could just focus on camera and basic interview lighting in my little van. If you're shopping for your first equipment cart, they do seem shockingly expensive. Now again, I bought this Magliner Senior back in 2000, so it's been with me for 22 years. It was $1,500 at the time. That's a Mag Senior with the lower and upper 24 inch shelves. And then it was an extra 300 bucks. I believe it was 1200 plus 300 for backstage foam filled tires. But also look at it, 22 years, that's $68 a year. And I haven't had to put any additional funds into the cart over the years. Very low to no maintenance. I mean, that's like six or eight dollars a month. See, the number one issue with lower cost carts are the hard tires, hard plastic or hard compound. And it's really hard on optics and camera gear bouncing around on pavement, cobblestone, brickwork. So it's best if you start with a different cart from a different industry, like my tool chest. The first thing you want to do is upgrade to a pneumatic tire. I did that on my tool chest. They're little four inch pneumatic tires I purchased from a website, castercity.com. So for the past year, year and a half, the projects I've been on have allowed me to pull the truck up close to set and I can work off of it. I've only pulled the tool chest out for a few projects. It's usually when I'm in a downtown city environment and I got to go up an elevator. Incremental mods to the van to work on location off the tailgate has resulted in a build where the mag senior no longer fits in the rear door. I got two issues, the bed's too low and then this center divider under the bed is about 18 inches too short to accommodate the mag liner assembled. I burned a few hours on YouTube watching van build outs with motorized beds that elevate at the push of a button, linear actuators, belt driven, manually operated. I don't know if I'm gonna do that. It's a lot of work, priced it out. I think I can do it myself with four linear actuators and a track and some of that 80-20 extruded T-slot aluminum for under a thousand dollars. But I don't think I wanna put that much complexity into the van. I think it may be just better to yank the bed when I wanna roll the assembled cart in and maybe pick up an additional rock and roller cart that I can roll on and adjust the length and height to fit under my current bed build out. Next few projects are similar equipment packages and similar load in complexity as they're all in cities with elevator rides. So this first one is a single FX9 with an onboard teleprompter. My prompter is two Pelicans and a smaller ATA case, three cases total. Audio kit on the right, two Aperture 300Ds up top, and then I added my stand hangers. These are made by Backstage. I've not used them in years, but I actually have two sets, so you can hang a total of four C stands, two per side. The problem with these is it makes the cart too wide to go through a standard doorway. Now with stands just on one side of the cart, you can kind of diagonally work your way through. Sometimes I gotta pull one of the stands off, but it's also kind of dangerous because you get the C stand on the side, which can gouge up would work. I don't really have good tie down points for this mag liner on the right hand side of the van. I had installed a few D-rings in specific positions for the build with the bed frame installed. But in this case, a row of E-track on the right hand side of the van would be ideal. I don't know, we'll see how this plays out next couple projects, but maybe I'll put some E-track in to make this loaded cart friendly. So I took some measurements from the top of the Aperture 300D cases to the ceiling is 21 inches. My bed frame and mattress uses up nine inches. So if I were to have a height adjustable bed, it would give me 12 inches of accommodation space. And that's not really enough space. I think I, I need at least like six, uh, 16 or 19 inch, really 19 inches. Then I can like frame my arms with my elbows bent over my head and still have clearance, but at 12 inch, I'm just a couple inches above my chest. I think that's gonna be way too claustrophobic. So yeah, we'll just run through this for a few projects. After a few load in and outs with this new configuration, I know I'm gonna have a new fresh perspective on this build out. That's it for this week. Thanks for watching.